Today I'm dusting off my shelves and I'm going to share with you this little diorama. Yes, this little bar scene is where all my past player characters hang out. Pretty much all of the major player characters I've played throughout the years. I'm using a microfiber uh, thing here to very carefully clean them off. You'll notice some of them are a little bit dinged up. Uh, most of these have a protective layer, be that uh, just polyurethane lacquer or something like that. Uh, you know, wear and tear and everything like that. But uh, yeah, these are all of my player characters from past games. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of these uh, from uh, back in the day. And uh, maybe you can, in the comments below, you can talk about your past player characters and if you had a special miniature for any of them. I'm just being very careful with this, even though, you know, I'm just doing a very rough job of cleaning this off a little bit. I love this little uh, modular bit of uh, bar scenery. I use it for several dungeon crawls. The mushroom guys, uh, that was just for a miniature challenge thing. And the little mushroom guys are just that. They're just sort of mushroom guys. They fit in with the, uh, the backdrop of the bar. This is my oldest character. This is Bell Rook. And uh, obviously he's a stone child a miniature from the old Hasbro line. He's supposed to represent a half ogre. This is the first real uh, role-playing character I've ever played. And, uh, yeah, it was from uh, a game of Warhammer Fantasy 2nd Edition, the first uh, role-playing game that I ever participated in. Basically, the GM had a bunch of old Hasbro miniatures, so he let me borrow one. And But eventually, I painted one up of my own. And I was accused of <laughs> painting up the miniature that... Uh, <laughs> I, I was accused of painting up the miniature he allowed me to borrow by another player, which is bizarre. How weird would that be? As if somebody let you use a miniature, and at the end of the game, at the end of the night, you took it home and painted it. That would be like, that would be bizarre behavior. Back then, Stone Child Miniatures, you could go on Miniature Market and get one for like $2. And, and that's what I did, and then I painted it up myself very clumsily. This is one of the first miniatures I ever painted. Bell Rook, uh, a lot of good times, obviously inspired me to run my games a certain way. But uh, yeah, a lot of good memories with this miniature. And already we're going to get confused with the timeline, but I think this is the next one. Uh, this is Shapik. Shapik was my character in Baldur's Gate, uh, but when I played 4E... Yes, 4E. This was my miniature that I used for the Tiefling version of Shapik, the uh, Hexblade. So yes, uh, this is the 4E game where I was playing a D&D 4E Essentials character. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'll get too much into the whole opinion of 4E in this video. Suffice it to say that I, uh, I had pretty much all of the books for people to say that I don't have a reason to critique a specific version of D&D uh, I was very well versed into it and we'll just say I'm super happy that we have a different edition that's much better but yeah look at that the old paint job this is from the very first uh, Reaper Bones Kickstarter that's, believe it or not, the Reaper Bones Kickstarter was literally the first time I bought miniatures. Can you believe that? I saw the zombie pack on there where you got a bunch of zombies and rats. I bought it, and eventually I got the vampire pack. This is one of the miniatures. Amazing. I loved cheap miniatures even back then. This guy was going to be part of a D&D game, which was a Pathfinder game. Pathfinder 1. And this was, one again, uh, this was from a Kickstarter from Stonehaven Miniatures. Pewter Miniatures made right here in the United States. Obviously, you can tell, even though this is a very amateur job of painting this miniature, the amazing detail that these miniatures have made make it look really nice. 
even though I think this might be like one of the first 10 miniatures I ever painted. Yes, anyways, a, uh, a ranger, a uh, hunter, uh, and who used a cross repeating crossbow. Uh, very cool concept. Uh, I don't remember the name. Gone to the Ages. It was something interesting. Um, it was it was something dwarvish. Anyways, uh, it, that was one of those games where famously, uh, it just didn't go off. Like we we had like one session. Very common, sadly, to have only one session of this game where you put all this effort into making this uh, Jaeger character, Ranger guy, and then you never get to play him. A uh, shame. And here, finally, five E. We have my first 5e character, Grep Gondshanks, a rock gnome barbarian. 5e had an absolute blast playing this barbarian. Ended up being a totem barbarian again. This is why when the idea was, for a while there, if you didn't remember, uh, people were basically saying, you basically have to start out all 5e games at level 3, because level 3 is all where all the cool stuff happens. And I was never a fan of that. Uh, it's because in my first game, I thought I was going to go with a certain path with this character, and I ended up doing something completely different uh, because of what happened in the game. My character was shaped by what happened around the table, this character, Grep Gonshanks, eventually became a totem barbarian, uh, not because of the amazing <laughs> tankiness of that, but rather uh, the uh, ability to talk to animals, because that ended up being a thing. Nobody else in the party could talk to animals, and if you were a totem barbarian, you could, and uh, yeah. This is another Stonehaven miniature, however... You might notice some weirdness about this. That's because this is one of my first efforts into press mold duplication. That's right, folks. This is a counterfeit D&D &D miniature. This is a simple press mold, uh, two-part press mold using green stuff and Oyumairu mold-making material. The Japanese stuff. His face turned out really good. I actually, you can you can notice the telltale signs of some of the studs being uh, indented rather than actual studs. But uh, yeah, I think this miniature actually turned out really great. Uh, you still got some of that amazing detail. Uh, I don't know why I was so keen on doing uh, duplication uh, at this time so early in my D&D miniature career. I think it's just because... I wasn't all that uh, confident in my painting skills, so I didn't want to paint the metal miniature, which was dumb, because you saw the previous dwarf, which looked really good, and uh, painting a metal miniature actually, in some ways, is actually easier than painting a miniature made out of uh, green stuff like this, uh, just because the details will actually help you in uh, making it look good in the end. But, hey... Uh, uh, you know, I just I just liked this part of the hobby, doing duplications, you know, having multiples of the same character. It looks really nice, uh, and at the end of the day, I uh, had a bunch of fun uh, fun playing this character. A lot of fun with 5e. 5e, obviously, was probably my absolute favorite game I've played so far. I mean, it's pretty close to Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition. And you can see all the little telltale holes that show that this is actually a, uh, clearly a duplicate and uh, not the original miniature. The original Stonehaven miniature, which again was a kickstarted miniature that I got uh, from Stonehaven. Once again, uh, what a great company. They're still making pewter miniatures to this day. Look at that little helmet. Classic barbarian stuff. And of course, we have... One of the very many random miniatures. Anyways, this is Barl Barlson. He is a miniature from Chronopia. 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 I don't. I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyways, it's a war game. Apparently, it's back. <laughs> there was a Kickstarter for a brand new version of this game. Uh, I know in the past you could get these randomly on eBay for cheap. No longer, but yeah, 
Massive Oversized Weapons was the name of the game when it came to these miniatures. I had a lot of fun uh, painting this guy, and this was Barl Barlson, the uh, Dwarven Fighter. I believe he was always just a Dwarven Fighter. And uh, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of fun painting up this miniature, and a lot of fun uh, utilizing all the cool 5e weapons uh, with the typical oversized flair that Barl Barlson would bring to the table. If you can't tell, this is one of the first miniatures where I actually used some sort of like blending and highlights to try to get the facial uh, expression correct uh, and get the. Uh, the, the face to really pop. Uh, I used the three tone on this plus some washes. And yeah, you can really tell that this is when I started to actually learn to paint stuff properly. And here we have somebody very closely related to Barl Barlson, though not quite. Barl Gosa Iron Grasp. <laughs> That's right. This is a uh, Durgar. Dwargar. A gray dwarf uh, cleric, a forge priest in... He's shown up in a couple games, and he generally always is some sort of cleric uh, in his reincarnations. But yeah, this is obviously a chain mail miniature. Way back in the day, chain mail, classic stuff. You can tell it's a classic D&D miniature because they actually have the little piece of equipment there. The little chain to make sure you don't drop the weapon. I'm actually not sure. I, I'm familiar with the fact that that definitely is a thing in Pathfinder that people would always buy just so you never lost your weapon if it got knocked out of your hand or something like that. But uh, I am assuming there was something like that in D&D &D because it's rather prominent on this miniature. Obviously, this miniature was meant to be just a regular uh, dwarven cleric, but I painted him up as a gray dwarf uh, son of the Grim One, someone who had been separated from his clan, and he felt it was a a message to go out and become more powerful, adventuring in the upper worlds. And yeah, a, another great example of me learning how to do some basic basing, uh, to do make it a little more make it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, again, just basic uh, paint job on this. But, uh, yeah, I really like this miniature. Uh, Barl Gosa Iron Grasp, uh, kind of a jerk character. Not necessarily a purely evil character, but certainly a character that's uh, much more uh, focused on his own uh, stuff that he wants to do rather than what's uh, good. Oh, and finally, <laughs> we have one of my newer D&D &D characters, Snurk Scale Shanks. You can tell I really just love just putting the <laughs> word shanks in the names of my characters. Snurk here is a kobold. He was originally an NPC of one of my games. Uh, and I loved him so much that when the rules for kobold uh, 5e characters came out, hey, I had to make my own kobold character. So he's played around in several games uh, Snurk, uh, he's been a rogue most of the time, though he has been a bard as well. Uh, his famous catchphrase is, My name is Snurk, and it's time to go to work. Snurk is uh, a, a very charming person in most of his incarnations. And yeah, I really like him as, uh, I believe he mostly, as an NPC, he's always uh, the leader of a group of goblins. Uh, and yeah, this is, uh, yeah, if you notice, this is another original miniature from the Reaper Bones Kickstarter number one. One of the original Bones guys, and this is one of the first ones that I treated with my now, uh, absolutely standard, uh, treatment where I wash them thoroughly, soak them in rubbing alcohol 90% for at least a couple hours, let them dry thoroughly, and then hit them with a primer of polyurethane primer, usually Vallejo polyurethane primer, which I just brush on. And that gives me the absolute best um, uh, 
adherence, durability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've done plenty of videos about that. But uh, yeah, you can tell I did a basic paint job on this guy, but you know, I picked out some little tiny details. This is a very small miniature. And, but yeah, he's very durable. He's pretty shiny, so I'm assuming I probably gave him some clear coat with polyurethane. I've learned that you really can't use much spray coating, coating on um, the PVC miniatures like this, so I'm assuming that's what it is. And uh, yeah, here we have it. The entire bar scene, which sits on my shelves, which all of my player characters hang out when they're not being utilized in a game. Obviously, uh, like these miniatures quite a bit, uh, I always use them as NPCs, uh, and when I'm playing a game, uh, I end up usually playing one of these guys. But uh, yeah, I'm always uh, looking out for that next new uh, player character to play. And the Mushroom Guys, again, <laughs> that was from a challenge with uh, Raven Minis, uh, and uh, they just look cool because they're all drinking at a bar, so I figured they fit in well here. But yeah, those are just custom sculpts that I created. I really like the little Muppet guy that's got his arms outstretched. Um, his miniature is supposed to go along because like, there's this plant uh, miniature that's actually grabbing his bottle of booze. So that's why he looks like that. But he also looks like he might just be, you know, asking for another drink or talking to somebody taller than him. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I never said uh, this bar scene is uh, made up of Hearst Arts mold stuff, which I recasted. So this is like uh, mold stuff that I got that was cast from Hearst Arts. And then I made molds from those castings. So <laughs> it's a very ghetto situation. But you know what? In the end, it does the job. And that's what you really want. So yeah, uh, I don't think I ever really meant for this to be the hangout location of all my former uh, role-playing game player characters. But uh, that's just how it ended up. I would really like to know if you guys do something similar in uh with your D, D player character miniatures or if you even have specific player character miniatures i know some people uh have a special place in their heart for certain miniatures uh certainly my little owlbear guy uh sits on his throne uh, amongst my other miniatures but uh, yeah let me know if you have anything similar to this in your collection or if there is a shelf piece like this on your shelf uh, thank you very much for listening to this, and uh, if there's anything similar coming up, I will let you know. Peace!